So I'm going to go ahead and go over some things with you. Um, I'm going to present this. I took this course a couple of weeks ago from Screencastify. Um, I do have at the bottom of the presentation, and I'll share this presentation with you later. So you can always do this with other people as well. Um, this is the lady that presented it to us. Um, she was very awesome. She went over some stuff, and I and I told Dr. Anders this would be great for teachers to also be part of. Um, so during this time, we're actually going to give you guys some time to really think about what makes an effective instructional video and then how can we leverage the Screencastify to record and edit features to create effective instructional videos and then what videos can we create to engage our students in the near future and I'm actually going to hopefully give you some time because we do have um, and I'm going to look at the time up here that they gave us so that I can, like, um, we do have until 10.50. And so I'm hoping to give you guys some time to actually um, work on coming up with some ways that you could use Screencastify and even use it this, this afternoon. You guys are going to be grading and some of you grade essays or you grade work of students. You might be able to use Screencastify a little bit more effectively for feedback. So um, those are the things that we're going to go over. And then these are the four main areas we're going to look at. We're going to look at signaling. Um, and we're going to see, is it clear what's most important? We're also going to look at segmenting one thing at a time. Um, also weeding, where we take the irre irrelevant information and cut it out. And then matching the modality, where we switch it up with pictures, video, text, audio to get that. And she did share a really interesting article, and I'll share this um, presentation with you so that you can actually look at this um, from the Vanderbilt Center for Teaching. It was a really interesting article about how people learn. Um, and I think you guys understand also when you get a video how does that help you? How does that help you learn? Um, and we will show you where we have some things for Screencastify as well already on our site. Um, so the first thing I'm going to go over is signaling. So signaling is just being able to show students where things are. So I'm going to first give you guys an example here and I'm going to click present. And I'm going to take out my um, mic so that you guys can hear it. And I'm going to go ahead and play this, make sure it's high, and let you see it says, use, you know, when you signal, you use visual clues to draw the student's attention in. So you try to retain the most important information. So think about how we signal in traditional classrooms. And then we're going to talk about what they're doing here that they're not doing in traditional classrooms. So so what she was showing is, and I'm just going to show you because something's happening when I'm hitting play with this, and it could just be something that Screencastify has in here that I don't know. But she was showing the borders, but she was just like pointing back and forth. What would we do in a traditional classroom to show borders on a map if we had the map projected up onto our whiteboard? What are some things that we would do? She was showing north and south. She was showing between Canada and the United States. What are some things that we would just like intuitively do? You can also t uh, type it in the chat too. Let me see. Yeah, point to the map. Um, I always probably would be flying myself up on the board, like showing and actually uh, taking a marker, drawing on it, or actually annotating on it with something like Cami or something. I would be actually drawing on it and being able to do that. And that is something that that doesn't signal anything for the students. So in Screencastify, and how many of you have used Screencastify in here? Give me just like a hand if you've used it and you've used it a little bit. Okay, that's great. And for those of you that aren't out there like unmuted, you can go ahead and just tell me in the chat. But for Screencastify, I did give you guys the link um, for this presentation. If you go to the little puzzle piece that says extensions, I have it open. I have Screencastify on. What I usually do is I manage my extensions here. So I turn off the ones that I don't use all the time and I just have it off so that I don't have to worry about it. And then I um, don't have to uh, work so hard of, of trying to uh, track down my extensions up here. 
So I click on my little puzzle piece. I find Screencastify. One way I can go into Screencastify is I can look at all my recordings here. And I can do that as well if I want to. Um, another way that I can go into Screencastify is I can actually start um, presenting. I'm not going to embed my webcam because I'm actually on a video conference, so I can't do that. But I'll show you how that looks later on. I can choose my mic that I'm on right now. So it's doing my internal mic right now because I unplugged my headset. And then what you can do is uh, whenever you start it, it will, you'll hit record. You might have to set up your mic and your screen. You choose the entire screen. You click share. And then it gives you a three, two, one. But down here in the corner, it does give you, and I just want to make sure that you guys can still hear me. Yes. Okay. Um, down here in the corner, it does give you a pen. But up here, it gives you these different pointers. So you can actually emphasize, like if I was on that map and I wanted to show them the line, I could do that and emphasize that. I could also, um, and I would have to get off of that. So you have to click it again. I could also do with mouse clicks where I would have a red circle and I would be able to uh, highlight and show things as well. But I could also, um, for this one, I'm just trying, I think I have to get off this one first. For this one, you have the red circle as well, um, but you can move it. Where the other one is a little bit more stationary. But you would be able to do that. You could also use the pen tool. While you're grading this afternoon, you could actually circle things, show students things. I would have definitely have used this as an English teacher because I would have been showing students what to do with their writing. They could watch the movie, pause it, split screen it, but they would not just resolve my comments, resolve, 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 uh, which they normally do. So you can always use that. So again, when they were showing that, um, you know, the, the map, they could have drawn a line between Canada and the United States to show that border because all they did was they just scrolled over with their mouse, which was so hard to see. And that's how most of the videos present themselves on a Google slide for students. It's very small and sometimes they don't click out of it. They watch it within the slide. So we have to be cognizant of that as well. Also, you can add text in the iMovie editor and you can zoom in with the iMovie editor. Um, if you go into your iMovie, and I, I was playing around with this earlier just so that I could show you guys this. Um, and can you guys still see that? Just wanna make sure you can see my iMovie. I'm gonna send this to you guys in the presentation but you, you will be able to see that what I did is in here, I added a text. So I actually um, went up here to titles. I go down to the bottom and I usually choose this or this one and I add a text and I have it in there. Another thing you can do is, I do this sometimes, I have too many tabs open. So one thing that I can do if I go to my media and I actually highlight on the iMovie, I can go here and I can crop it to fill so that I can take out any of those tabs that I had open that like students didn't have to see that I was on Amazon or anything like that. And I was like, whoops, I didn't change that tab and I just need to get it out of there. And as you do that, you'll notice that you'll have that for the entire movie. If you decide to um, split any of this, you'll have to remember whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. But that's one way of doing it is to bring it into iMovie. Um, they do have on the big video for um, the, the premium for Screencastify, the editor, but I will tell you it's not that great. And we will be going over why we wouldn't want to have the premium. Um, so that would help. I did hear a couple of boop boops, so I just wanna make sure. Um, and you guys can hear me, correct? I just want to make sure. All right. I will be giving you guys this presentation later so that you can look at it. Again, as you see, I'm on the pen, so I have to go back down to my pointer or I'm going to draw all over when I'm trying to get to the next slide. Also, um, you know, emphasizing those mouse clicks like I had shown you up here, very important whenever you're showing. 
when you have that pen tool, you can change the different colors of the pen. Um, when you have that, you can see that there's different shades. And now I can make it green and different things like that as well. When I was an English teacher, I did make certain colors represent certain things for students. And they started to remember those colors. Um, so that's something to uh, think in mind. And then for this one, I'll let you watch this video later. She actually then shows signaling with the drawing tools. And it's so much better than that blank canvas and it makes so much more sense. So I'll let you guys watch that later. Also segmenting, um, it's the separation into bite-sized pieces. Um, last year for the um, distance learning when we first started, my kids go to Berkeley County Schools and my son's uh, math teacher sent him a video. It was 42 minutes long. Um, it was the longest video I ever saw in my life. It, after five minutes, started to cycle. It wasn't, and I mean, we have really good internet, but it was cycling. And I told, um, I told him, I'm like, you can watch it later. And he's like, no, I'm good. I, I saw it and that's it. He only watched five minutes. This poor teacher had made a 42 minute video, was working so hard on it. And he, he didn't want to even have anything to do with it. So it's better to segment, especially if it's an instructional video, you know, show them something, then have them go do something and then come back and watch another video. Um, and, you know, you can make longer videos into chunks so you can have, you know, with the free version, we have five minutes. You can do five, 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 and then have 15 minutes worth of video, but you're chunking it for them and scaffolding their learner. Um, learning and then also um, we have the free version because we want to keep that philosophy we want to segment plus we have kids um, that the Wi-Fi and their broadband issues they have smaller fa files and stuff like that too and if I show you guys if I go in here to um, I think I have it at the end but I'm just going to show you here as well I should have had it up and I apologize I was doing a blended learning, but this is our screen Classify PD. It does mention that at the top about uh, making it very small and succinct. But if you look and you go to these different written directions and stuff like that, you'll see it. And then they do have videos, but most of our PD modules uh, are going to be where they're very small and succinct and to the point. We try to make them five minutes or less. Um, so we do try to do that. Um, any questions with the first two things, the segmenting, um, anything else? For those of you that just came in, we talked about signaling, making sure students were able to see things, like if we're showing them a map or we're showing them something on the board versus virtually, how are we gonna signal that to them? We talked about these pointers, all of these cursors and different things in drawings, these work within Google Chrome. So you can open up a doc, a slide, anything, and be writing on it. Like I said, you could today be writing on and marking up the text while you are making videos for students. If you're seeing the consistent issues happening between them, just call something up and show them and start and make a video and put that into your um, Google Classroom and say, guys, please watch this video so that we can go ahead and make sure we don't all make the same mistake. Um, and that's always very helpful to them as well. Um, and then again, whenever you want to go back to your pointer, um, and I could go ahead and then emphasize the word signaling here, I would have my pointer there. And then to get off of it, I would just go ahead and click on it again. Um, and then segmenting, we definitely want to make short videos, not long videos, bite-sized videos, videos that are very, very small um, and, and purposeful. Um, also with weeding, um, it's the practice of eliminating any unnecessary stimuli. Um, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I walk into a classroom and I'll be like, whoa, there's just so much going on. There's so many brightness and posters and everything. And it takes me a minute to find my focus point, to find that teacher or to find something. And so, you know, think of how students learn. They're looking at things. So we're going to try to trim and crop away anything unnecessary, like I was showing you guys on iMovie, where you take away and you have them focus on that area. And I'm just going to show you this as an example. 
Um, you have here, you have a, a, a presentation, but then you have the teacher's chat that she had going on. You see her desktop, you see all of this, and you see all the tabs she had open. You can see her Gmail. Uh, we've had teachers send us screencastifies where they were looking up something and we were like, that needs to be chopped out of the video whenever we put it on the site. I mean, just different things like that. So it's good to have a few things in mind. Um, one thing is, you know, make sure um, that you can eliminate most everything on and I only have like one tab open. Something that is really cool in Google Drive that I use a lot is priority. Priority will allow me to have certain things open. Like today I have these for November 3rd. These are all from different shared drives from my drive. And then I can actually click on it and I can get to that right away instead of like trying to find it. So you could possibly use that as well. Um, also, whenever you think about it, do we want to put the webcam? Do we want to embed that? Is that going to help us if we are up here in the corner or over here in the corner? Because you can move yourself. And if you ever lose yourself, just minimize. And usually you can find yourself and drag yourself back in. Um, sometimes it, it presents itself behind. So you might have to find yourself. Um, and then trim away any extra stuff. They do show that this is on Screencastify. But I showed everybody how to do that on iMovie. So I'm just going to open that up again just to like um, preface that again. So if I go into, and it's opening this project that I have, and right here at the top where you have your crop to fill, I can go ahead and change this to be whatever I want it to be. And it will change that throughout the entire presentation so that I have that and I can go ahead and crop and fill that. And I can also add titles so that uh, people know what my video is about, or I can add something in that comes over for students to see as well. Um, you can always bring media in, and if you bring in another media, you can um, then make a picture in picture, and I can send you directions on that as well. So you have options in iMovie to do that. Then you just download it onto your desktop, you can upload it into your drive, and then use that one. Um, it's an extra step. Screencastify does allow you to bring it directly to your drive, but I like the option of um, making it a little bit more trimmed and complete and professional at times. Other times, I just send it on through. Um, also, you can uh, crop out anything unnecessary uh, with having those editors. The iMovie editor is very nice. And then um, any questions with the weeding, like getting rid of all the unnecessary stuff. Uh, Judy said, when making a Screencastify video, you're not able to switch between tabs, correct? Uh, yes, you can. Actually, um, I'm gonna show you something. I, I can go through the different tabs. Can you guys see my drive? You see the Screencastify module. I can also go into incognito and you guys should still be able to see me there. So I can open up a whole new area and you guys should be able to see me there as well. So you can go between the tabs, uh, Judy. Can you, um, can you do that while you're recording in Screencastify? Because I didn't yes. think you could. Yes, you do okay. have to choose and I will show you. Um, right now I have Screencastify still recording. So I'm gonna hit stop sharing. It's going to come up and it's going to be a really long video, um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and click out of that. Um, and then I'm going to show you, if you go into Screencastify, it will ask you, and do you see you have browser tab? If you do that one, you will only do one tab. If you do desktop, you can do it all. You can show everything. You could even like, as you saw, I went out of my Chrome okay. browser. The only thing is, so I would go out of my Chrome browser and I'm on desktop and I would try to write on it, I wouldn't be able to write on the iMovie. It does take my webcam and allow me to go into iMovie and show my webcam or on my desktop, but I can't write because this is a feature that's in Chrome for the writing part. But that's probably what happened. You probably were in browser tab. Um, and that happens sometimes. I'll click something and be like, oh, I, I one time I did a full video and I went to listen to it and I had the microphone turned off and I was like, okay, it was completely muted. So, you know, I've been there um, and I've done that. 
And again, you know, anytime you need to look at your recordings, you can go up here. Like this morning, I did the one recording for you guys today on editing and cropping. And then I'm going to actually show you guys how to bring that in. So right now, um, I can go to copy a shareable link. So I have that. I can also, if I want to, I can download it and export it as an MP4 so that you guys can see that as well. And then um, if I want to, then I can go into here. I'll make a new um, slide, and that will be 22. And then I'll go ahead and I will um, go to insert and go to video. And then I'll go by URL. And I don't know if they're going to allow me to find it or I'll have to go to Google Drive probably. But I have it in there. It's one of my recent ones. Might even be able to go to recent. I'm going to just give it a minute here. I'm going to try to be patient, as patient as I can be. Um, a lot of us are using our computers here at CS right now. So here's my editing and cropping one. And I'm going to select it. And I'm going to bring it right in. And it's going to bring it in. It's going to give me some options. It's going to give me the ability to um, play it back right away and autoplay it. And sometimes I, I used to like to use this one. I used to mute the audio. I actually used to uh, mute it and, and make it so that um, the students were just going to watch what was happening. And I would even put that in the directions. So I'm just going to say um, cropping um, and um, text so that you guys know that what that's about. And this might be the video. I made a video that I actually messed up on and I said, I am stopping because this is something I could crop out later. I was showing you that I forgot like what I was gonna talk about, which I surely did, but I was showing you that you can take and crop those things out. Um, so that's one way that you can put those in there. All right, so did that help you, Judy, to see how to do the tabs versus the desktop? Yes, that's perfect, thank you. Okay, and that's, I mean, that is a common mistake. I've done it before. It's like, you know, every once in a while you're like, really? <laughs> but it's okay. Um, now for the matching modality, um, that refers to picking the right way to present information. So you always have to ask, you know, should I show my screen? Should I show my webcam? Uh, does the microphone need to be on? You know, like think about how that's supposed to look. So you could maybe only record the webcam when you need to. Um, if you're in secondary and you're getting the huddle cam, you might be able to even use that because it does work with Screencastify. And you'd be able to zoom in, show your board, and do a recording with that as well. Um, and then you might want to do it where you only have your webcam or your microphone um, when necessary. Uh, and then you know, you include whatever they need, whatever visuals, whatever music, whatever you think is going to help them learn from it. That's what you should sort of include in everything that you're doing. Um, and, you know, sort of think about how you can tailor that for your learners. You know your learners. We're at the end of marking period one. You know them well enough that you're like, okay, this is how they're starting to learn. This is what they like best. And I always like to switch it up with them and do different things, but I always like to have that personal me telling them something. My son is very fortunate. He has a geometry teacher this year, and she is doing instructional videos every week for them, and it's her. It's her, and I believe she's using Screencastify. She's writing on like a Jamboard type whiteboard. She's showing them exactly what the, you know they need to know for geometry. And then she has them go and do other things to practice. But it's her initially showing everything. She doesn't send them to Khan Academy. It's just sort of nice because they get that instructional video. And, he, you know, he doesn't, they don't um, Zoom every day. Um, so he doesn't get to ask her questions till Friday. Friday morning he has a meeting with her. So he can watch these videos, and if he does have questions, write them down, and then ask them during that time. So um, think about like what kind of videos you can create. You can create those instructional videos like we were talking about, but also think about verbal feedback. How can you open up a student's piece of work 
And instead of marking it up or giving them comments, how can you use Screencastify and use that little toolbar? And I'll just open this up again to show you guys. So if I'm going to take my desktop and record it, and I choose that, when those tools come up down here, how am I going to use those tools to sort of show the kids different things, cross things out, underline, do whatever, and show them things that I am looking for in their work. And again, I'm doing all of that online in the video, but when they get the actual document and they open it up, none of that's there. So it's nice, they could watch the video, but then they can actually go and do the changes. Um, be aware too that students that will have Chromebooks in all the middle and high schools coming soon, they're gonna be able to screencast using their uh, Chromebooks as well. So it's not just you, you can then have them screencast something to show their understanding so they can explain um, to one another. This is great for substitute plans, sending updates to parents, putting something on your website, whatever you're doing. Um, I think Screencastify is great. I usually, if there's a teacher that sends me a problem and says, I can't, I can't, can you do a screencast for me real quick? <laughs> and when they send it to me, I'm like, oh, I see it right away because I'm so visual and I need to see that instead of be told what's happening. Um, and then I'm able to uh, troubleshoot with them. So um, I am going to go up here because it just took that away and I want to, I actually want to stop it. And again, anytime that it comes up, it comes to here. You can then, um, title it, and then sometimes I download it as an MP4 because I want to put it into iMovie and I want to manipulate it. And then other times I don't, I don't manipulate it. So it all depends upon what I want to do. Um, and there's a million more ideas like uh, we were saying, but I am actually giving you guys some time. We have about 20 minutes. I want you guys to think about a concept that you plan to teach to your students. And I want you to actually create an instructional video. You'll mute yourself from the Meet. You'll go down here on the Google Meet and you'll mute yourself. You can then um, open up other tabs and stuff like that. But I want you to just play with it. You know, think about something that you're going to do under five minutes, something real quick that you're going to show them this week, something that you're going to do when you're grading or you started grading last week, you know, last night or a couple days ago and they were all doing the same mistake and you just want to give them a little quick video to say, guys, you know, all of you did a great job and these are the things you did great with and these are the things that you need some improvement with. And I would say always highlight the great too. Uh, when I was a teacher at North High for 24 years, I would call sometimes and I would be talking about the good stuff only the good stuff. And I did that for my own sake because I just didn't want to do bad calls all the time. And one time I called and the one um, person answered and I thought it was the father and I was like, I need to talk about so-and-so. And they were like, yes, this is he. And I was like, okay, you know, are you the parent? This is he. And I'm like, okay. And I started talking about all the great stuff that this child was doing. And all of a sudden they stopped me and they said, hey, I'm actually the brother and my parents will freak when they hear this. Can I go get them? <laughs> so it's just one of those things, you know, to, to, to give them some positive feedback too and show them what they're doing really great with. Um, they do have a lot with Screencastify. When I put this in, I am going to give you the PD module that we made as well. I'm going to put in there. Um, and I have some of the things in here from Screencastify. They do have different things um, that they have courses that you take and you get an actual certificate um, and there's different levels and they even have one for students as well where it's the master the screencast junior if you feel like you're really going to use it in your class you might have your students take that and then give them some credit for getting that through um, and taking the course. So that might be something you might want to do as well, um, just so that they also know how to do Screencastify really well. Um, if you have iPads, um, we can show you how they do the screen recording on there as well.
Uh, first off, any questions that you guys have? So when we're in a middle school, so we don't have Chromebooks yet, but the students will be able to add extensions or how will they go about being able to add extensions? That's a good question. Um, actually, it's sort of like a self-service. They're going to have two things. Um, they're going to have a web store. And if you look here on a uh, MacBook, we don't have anything in the bottom left. But on a Chromebook, it's a little circle. It almost looks like a power button to me. Like if you click it, it's going to turn it off. But it's actually your app launcher. And it will have the web store in there. You'll click on the web store, and you'll be able to see um, the extensions. And the students can add them. Another thing that all the Chromebooks will have, and you'll have um, training on very soon, is GoGuardian, if you haven't taken it yet. And GoGuardian is something where you can watch and make sure that the student, you could just say, go to your puzzle piece, and then you can go into their extensions. And if you don't see Screencastify, you'll have them add it. Um, and you can watch them physically do it. Um, so you can you can help them through the process as well, which is really nice because it will be on their tab. They'll also have Google Play, but you will see there's probably approximately 10 apps total that Chromebooks have. All the rest are just essentially extensions or they are cloud-based. You don't need to actually use a lot of apps on the Chromebook. Um, you'll find that um, it's not as robust as the iPad because like, for example, Flipgrid. Flipgrid can be accessed online through the cloud. It is not an actual icon and app anymore like it was on the iPad. So that's the difference. But that's where they'll access it. They'll actually go to the corner and find it. And we're making, uh, we, we have a thing that all the schools will be able to uh, give to students. It's a QR code that they'll be able to scan. Uh, Christy Haggerty from South, she made a series of videos for students on how to set up their Chromebook and use certain things. And she does discuss the web store and the Google Play Store for them as well. So that's something that they'll be able to watch and access and know. And you guys will be able to access it because we have training coming out for you guys very soon for the Chromebook. Um, and you guys will take that and you'll be able to see what the students are getting. Um, so you'll be able to do that. Did that help you, Lee? Yep, thanks. Okay, awesome. Um, so anybody have any questions? I just want you guys to play with Screencastify. Um, the thing that I completely 100% agree in and believe in, if you get time to do and play with something, you're going to use it more. Um, so you can go ahead and mute yourself. You just go down here to the bottom and mute yourself. And then go ahead and create some things. If you want to share later on your creation with me and say, this is what I made. Um, can you give me some pointers or how do I? Um, that would be fine. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I do want to give you that time because I don't want you to just feel like you sat and you got. I want you to then say, how can I apply? How can I have, and I'm going to leave this up whenever I mute myself eventually. Um, I'll leave this up for a little while. Um, but how can I apply those four things? How can I signal more? How can I segment it? How can I weed out some stuff? And then how can I match some of the modality? If I'm talking about something and it's about castles, how can I embed some castle pictures in there and then really point to some of the things about castles so that teach, so that they the visual learners see it? But then how do I help those audio learners learn too? How do I embed something that is just sounds of what an old castle would sound like. Bring all that experience in for the students so that they can see that um, as you're going. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself and then I'll go back to this video and I'm gonna give you some time to create and then I'm gonna say at, let's say right now it's not 1036, let me say like at one, um, 45 we just get back together and we just talk about like something that you may have started to think about creating I know myself sometimes I need to draw it out like a storyboard and I'm not going to do it right now But I need it on a piece of paper first and then I'll actually create it So it's up to you guys how you do it, but just use this time wisely um, You you can uh, think of ways that you can use it and I would think of something that's going to be this week next week you know, today, how are you going to create something? 
And if you have questions, put it in the chat. Um, I am going to put the slideshow in there as well. Actually, um, the slideshow should also be uh, linked in the agenda um, that where you click to get on to this. Um, and I am going to add that Screencastify PD module two to the chat. So I'm putting right now in my presentation and then I'm gonna put in this PD module too because I didn't have that linked, but I'll give you that too so you can bookmark that, okay? So I gave you both of the links right now, um, and then I'm gonna mute myself for a while so you guys can explore. Okay, it's 10.46, and I just wanted to have you guys share out some of the things that you may have been doing, um, give us some inspiration on how you're gonna think of using Screencastify. I do a quick video um, at the end of each day for students who were able to make the Zoom class or uh, maybe had technical issues so that they can get a kind of an overview of what we did. I'm hoping, I mean, no kids ask, what did I miss today? But I'm hoping that that's one of the reasons why so many kids aren't asking me, you know, I wasn't there, what do I have to make up? Because I have a folder in Google Classroom where I just put each day's new video. That's really good. And that gives them like a little overview. My son, actually, his biology teacher does the reverse. She does a video at the beginning of each day, says, goes into like their folder and says, like, this is the things that you need to do. And he said, that helps me so much, mom. I know exactly what to do. And like, I go straight to it. Um, so John, did you just share something with us here? Did you make something? I just says I need access. So I'm going to request access and then you can send it to me. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just, and it will come on my um, my mail and I'll be able to see it, which will be cool. I can't wait to see. What did you make, John? Just, I just started making a video about, you know, that I got about 15 seconds in and you started talking. So that was the end <laughs> of it. So, uh, but I started talking about how to uh, do a document-based question. It took me a while to get it all worked and working in. Plus, I'm on my PC at home. I'm not on my Mac, so uh, it just took me a little while to get everything working right. Yeah, last not this past summer, but the summer before, Michael Bear from Boonesboro High took a course with me, and he 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 was going through Screencastify and using it, and he said he was having troubles because it's so different on a PC versus on a MacBook or a Chromebook. So I do agree that there is a little bit of a learning curve there with it whenever you're doing it on a PC. Okay. I just dropped a new link that anybody should be able to use now. Okay, I'm so, gonna go ahead and- It's um, kind of embarrassing, but go ahead. Oh no! I I'm gonna I'm gonna actually um, save it and it's it's cycling right now and that's one of my things that I'll be able to watch. But again, you it's know, about I, fifteen seconds. Yeah, but again, it's you know, have you used Screencastify a lot since, like all of this? Have you used it with your students? No, today was the first time I ever used Screencastify. Okay, so then. By having that playtime, hopefully, <laughs> that's my hope, that you'll go out and you'll use it more. And maybe pass, it is, it's very easy, it's very intuitive. What's nice, it drops right into your drive. So you can then fetch that. And like I showed you, put it right into that slide and have it either automatically play when they click present or do it in different ways. So that's helpful too. And again, just, you know, think about how you can use Screencastify, how you can get the students to, um, you know, take these instructional videos, flip your classroom. I can see Screencastify being used a lot even whenever we're back face to face with students because they'll be able to watch those videos and, and get that. So I think you guys definitely will be able to um, use this for, for years to come. And by having the students green cast too, they can explain to you, this is how I'm getting the answer. Sometimes students would show me how they did something. It was not how I showed them, but I thought that's intriguing. That's interesting. That's sometimes how I found my IB students that I would recommend in ninth grade to 10th grade for IB, just because they thought outside the box. All right, so any other questions? Do you have any other questions? 
All right, I will have this recording as soon as it comes in and to my drive and I actually can link it. I'll have it linked in. All of the presentations today will be linked so that you guys can definitely have that um, where you can go and see other ones that you didn't get to go see. Use me as a resource anytime for Screencastify. Um, we do. We will have over the summer. We had a few courses. We will try to have more, but I just wanted to show people how they could maybe think about those four um, elements of creating effective instruction. Because we know how to do it face to face. This, you know, remote distance area is where it's sometimes we're trying to think about how we can do, best uh, help our students. So you guys are free to go. I appreciate everything that you guys do. Um, thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon. You. Hopefully you don't have to grade too much. <laughs> hey, you, I, uh, it's just it's kind of funny because I, I actually watched my video real quick. And it, it, you have to understand, I was, it was one thing after another, after another, I had to do all the problem solving. I finally just figured out what I was going to say, started talking, and then you jumped off and started talking. <laughs> And, and the look on my face, like, oh, <laughs> 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 that's so funny. Well, don't take it personally, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I will tell you this. You should see sometimes I will make a video and then realize, like I said, the sounds off or something like that. And I'll just be like, really? <laughs> that would have been and, a perfect and, and, video. And Jen here texted me. She watched it and texted me and told me I'm a dork. Oh, no, <laughs> not at all. Goodness gracious. That's okay. Oh, wow. It's fun. It's fun learning these things and, and putting them all together. I think you guys yeah. are doing a great job. So thank you for, I mean, that's thank the one you. thing you have to take the risk in order to get any benefit from it. So thank you for taking that risk, John. And thanks for doing the, uh, doing the presentation. It was, it was pretty good. Thank you. I appreciate okay. It. Thank you. you guys have, thank you. You guys have a right, wonderful Lisa. day. Thank you. Wonderful day.